In this JavaView online training video, I will consider displaying sequence features on the alignment. JavaView can display additional information as features on the alignment or annotation rows below the alignment. Generally speaking, features are associated with specific residues in the sequence and are superimposed onto the alignment. So they do not change their position on the residue if the alignment changes. In contrast, these annotation rows are dynamic, so if the alignment changes, then the annotation rows automatically recalculate. We have another video that discusses annotations. The link is in the text below. I will demonstrate how to manually create sequence features on the alignment. First, I will import a group of sequences that have already been aligned. The URL is shown on the screen and is in the notes below. The cysteine residues at column 97, 102, 105 and 135 are all involved in iron binding. If I navigate to column 97, select the entire row by clicking on the ruler bar and right click on the column to open the context menu, I select selection and create sequence features, a dialog box will appear. I enter a suitable sequence feature name, add text, Click on the feature color box to change the color and click OK. The features appear on the sequences at this cysteine residue. I will repeat this for column 102, 105 and 135. These features will now be grouped. If I mouse over the feature, a tooltip appears describing the feature. Note, since the feature is located on the sequence, the position given in the tooltip is the residue number, not the column number. If I insert gaps into the sequence, the feature moves with the sequence. I will delete these gaps using the Undo option in the Edit menu. If I go to the View menu in the Alignment window and select Feature Settings, the Sequence Feature Settings window will appear. This contains the feature I've just created. If I uncheck the checkbox for Iron Binding, the feature is no longer visible on the alignment. Checking the box will display the feature again. JavaView can retrieve features directly from databases such as Uniprot and Emble. I can retrieve features for a single sequence from a single database such as Uniprot by selecting the sequence, go to the web drop down menu in the alignment window and select Fetch DB References, then specify the database. I can load features for all sequences from all associated databases such as Emble, PDB and Uniprot by deselecting the sequence using the Escape key, go to the web drop down menu and selecting Fetch DB References and then select the Standard Databases option. Feature retrieval can take some time if the alignment contains a large number of sequences. When JavaView reads sequences and features from databases, it uses a coordinate mapping system to ensure that features are linked to the correct residue on the sequence. And this reference mapping ensures they remain linked to the correct residue during further analysis. However, if sequences have been modified before the features are imported, for example, a residue has been deleted, when the features are imported, they will be displayed incorrectly. For this reason, I would recommend that features are imported at the start of analysis. Placing the cursor on the sequence ID will open a tooltip which lists additional information about this sequence. This option can be turned off by going to the View menu in the Alignment window and selecting Sequence ID Tooltip and unticking Show Database Refs. When I place the cursor over the Sequence ID, the Tooltip now includes only the Sequence ID and the Start and End residue number. If I open the Sequence Feature Settings dialog box by going to the View menu and selecting Feature Settings, I can see all the features that have been imported. I can change the colour of features by selecting the colour box and selecting the colour as appropriate. I can change the order of the features. For example, I can drag the Metal Iron Binding Site feature to the top. Note that on the alignment, the features at the top of the list will overlay the features below them. I can untick boxes in the Display column to hide features. Clicking on the Optimized Order button reorders the sequence based on the average length of each feature type. Dragging the slider alters the transparency of the feature. I can use the Display features to reorder the alignment. 
For example, the sequence sort by density reorders the alignment according to the number of sequence features present on each sequence. Right-clicking the mouse opens the Sequence Feature Type menu. This context menu has several useful options. For example, I can hide all the columns except those that have specific features. Sequence features can be exported by going to the File drop-down menu and selecting Export Features. The file can then be saved. Dragging and dropping the file onto the alignment or using the Load Features slash Annotation option in the File drop-down menu will add features to the alignment. The feature file is a simple ASCII text file where each line contains tab-separated text fields. Note JavaView can also read GFF2 and GFF3 format files. The Sequence Feature File entry can be found in the Sequence Feature section. For more information about these file formats, please look in the JavaView documentation. Additional information retrieved from databases, such as ontology terms, cross-references, links to publications can also be exported. Place the cursor on the Sequence ID text and right-click the mouse and select Selection and select Sequence Detail option in the pop-up menu. This opens the Sequence Details window. The text can be viewed and saved. If the HTML option is used, the file can be opened in a web page. For more information, please look at the help documentation in JavaView or access the user manual available at www.jalview.org.